Hi there. Welcome to Proud to Be a Rust and Glass podcast. Today, I'm here with Zach Fletcher. Hello. Musician. Uh, Zach is a prolific singer and songwriter. He's also a guitarist, and he's from Ohio, and he's the band leader of Moths in the Attic. Uh, usually I have a clever little two to three line introduction for my guests, but he put it so eloquently on his website that I kind of just stole his today right from there. The ghost of his life experience pervade his uniquely crafted songs through poetic lyricism, riveting guitar patterns, and ethereal melodies. His music has been described as profound, emotional, and haunting. A musical catharsis resulting in a powerful live performance and an intimate listening experience. I love it. Beautifully said. Yes, um, it sounds good when you say it, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have you on the show. I appreciate you making the trip out and, and taking the time to talk with us today. Thank you for having uh, me. I'm very excited to dive right into the uh, the musician that is Zach. So let's just start from the beginning. How did music find you? I, I loved music ever since I was a kid. My parents are big music fans and, and connoisseurs and they kind of got me into it. I've told told this story many times in different uh, interviews and things like that, but it really kind of kicked off when they took me to see the band Kiss in Toledo. So that was for their like reunion tour when they. What was the venue for that concert at that time? Um, Savage Hall. Okay. So on on campus and. I know our concert venues here have changed quite drastically over yeah. the last few decades and. Yep. So yeah, it was kind of like watching. Uh, superhero rock stars and i was like nine years old and i was like wow this is obviously what i what i want to do so this is my dream and yep did you ever do the 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 face painting to try to imitate art before you sort of found your own voice for uh for each halloween i was one of the members for four consecutive okay uh, halloweens and i love it i found other other reasons to put on the the face paint when i was younger so that was (laughs) Kind of a funny, I mean, when you listen to my music now, it's, it's kind of a far cry from, from what Kiss sounds like, but right. that's kind of the the origin of what got me, you know, super into music to begin with. Right. And we all start somewhere, and, and I think a lot of us start with imitation. Yeah. And you imitate, and you imitate, and you imitate until you learn, and then you sort of find your own way, and a lot of times you end up completely opposite maybe even from where you started right which is awesome other than kiss though um who were some of your your favorite musicians yeah so as i've grown up it's definitely evolved in all sorts of ways so i kind of started off with a lot of those classic rock groups that's what my my dad listened to primarily and then um you know i got into bands and starting in middle school and into high school and Went through all kinds of phases. I was introduced to like hardcore and emo stuff, you know, in in, in uh, early high school. And I'm getting kind of back into a hardcore and emo phase. I don't know why it's yeah, happening. Well, <laughs> it's it's now nostalgic. So, yeah. but yeah, and then uh, acoustic music. I've always loved ballads and just the ease and sound of acoustic instruments. Amazing. Was there anybody who was maybe local or closer to you that sort of was your uh, your mentor or, or somebody you learned from as you sort of evolved as a musician? Yeah, so kind of right around that time when I decided that, you know, playing guitar is what I wanted to do. Um, my parents set me up with a local guitarist who is a teacher. His name's Al Foreman, and he was... So I'm, I'm from Bowling Green, by the way, okay. and they were... Uh, a Bowling Green band uh, named Sledge, and he was in a couple other bands too. So he was more of a of a metal guy, but you know, multifaceted like like many musicians. And he kind of got me started on like finger picking and things like that, which ended up being kind of the route that I traveled after that. But Amazing. but yeah, he was my my first guitar teacher and got me going. Amazing. I think I, I could be wrong, but I think I had. An interaction with another member of that band uh, related to something that Bowling Green University was putting on late last year. Okay. So that, it's it's amazing to think of all the, the talent coming from, from BG yeah, and, and the, the active things that they're still doing out there. Absolutely. Those guys are still, still around, still doing different projects, and it's one of those things that music, I mean, I foresee myself playing it and whatever capacity I can for as long as I can. So Right. And how long have you been playing playing live and, and really sort of taking it on as as a, this is this is my thing? 
Yeah, so, I mean, again, kind of since high school, I guess. Um, I guess kind of right after that, I'm th just thinking about, like, kind of the current iteration, I would say, like, 2009 or so okay. is when I started kind of writing my own acoustic music and performing live and trying it out and things like that. Do you remember your first uh, live performance of something original that you wrote? My very first was in middle school. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so that was with my, my band at the time, and I was also in the school jazz band. Oh, nice. And I went to uh, to the, the teacher of that course and was like, listen, I'm in a band. Would you give us the thumbs up just to play one song? for this uh for this event and it was the jazz band concert he, so i played him the song he was like okay i think we can do this and say, then, did he at least preview it first he, to make sure he knew what he was getting himself into he previewed it Amazing. and then the next thing i know there's flyers all over the school and it says zach fletcher's band like is the headliner okay <laughs> and then in small print oh yeah the the school jazz band is playing too. You know, we only there's played. That, there's that yeah. jazz band over there too. <laughs> we only played one song. I mean, it was very exciting, but it's it's funny to think about that. I kind of was it was it nerve wracking and and all that, or was it did it just come natural? I think a little of both, maybe. Uh, definitely, nerves were going mm -hmm. if if I recall correctly. <laughs> but you know, it was it was fun and cool. Like as it was happening, it was kind of my first taste of of what that feels like and. In front of the whole schools right. as a as a middle schooler, so no pressure. Right. Was but, it a, was it a pretty big confidence booster? I'm sure, though. I mean, I'm I'm sure they loved it. Yeah. No, we got a good reaction, and cool. yeah, it got me kind of hooked on live performance. And here we are today, right? Here we are. Yep. <laughs> I couldn't stop. <laughs> uh, from there, uh, obviously, you you have changed and, and grown and, and evolved a lot since then. Yeah. Uh, can you take us through that journey of evolution as a musician a little bit? Right. Um, yeah, so again, kind of starting in the rock realm, like that band was electric instruments. Um, after that band disbanded, I was like, well, I'm on my own. So it's kind of when the acoustic guitar took over. And yeah, in high school, I was messing around with um, alternate tunings and different things like that and just kind of exploring what an acoustic guitar could do and could sound like. So I started kind of amassing different instrumental things that it's like this could be a song one day and then I think early college is when I started putting words to those things and kind of fell more in the realm of like a folk inspired alternative rock kind of okay. thing okay. so still kind of nebulous but right but you know it brings in all of those influences of you know the rock influences mm -hmm. from my childhood and kind of the folkier things that I was getting into mm -hmm. as I got older. And for anybody who knows of any of your current projects and, and sort of the other musicians you work with, your your nebulousness is still, you know, on full throttle, right? Yeah, no, it's it's all over the place. I love it. Um, metal drummer, smooth jazz saxophonist, uh, work with people from the university, BGSU, so classical performers and all kinds of stuff. And it's it's a fun thing to integrate all of that and see what comes out. Amazing. What parts of your life do you sort of, you know, bleed into your music to, to not only find your inspiration, but to, to pull your subject matter from and, and to really bring it to life for your audience? Yeah, it's, um, for me, I mean, one of the greatest discoveries since the Kiss days <laughs> was just... Nothing will ever beat that. But, yeah. Right. <laughs> was um, how therapeutic playing music can be. So, I mean, still to this day, one of my favorite things is just going to my my space where I can be alone and, and playing guitar, and it's almost like a meditative kind of thing. So, yeah, I could kind of bring in, like I said, it's it's like a therapy, so bringing in those things that are difficult to express um, in other ways, and somehow I can do that in music. It's sort of, it's sort of noise to get you away from no, the noise, right? Yeah. I like it. And I know anybody who listens to music, anybody who, who is like, like your parents, mm -hmm. connoisseurs of music, I mean, you, you obviously, you get that from, you know, experiencing it, but playing it is, is probably a whole nother, whole nother level of that. Yeah. It's, um, 
I don't know. It's hard to describe. Mm -hmm. Do you have any any frustrations in your music career? Anything that's 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 difficult that you you, you maybe you've you've overcome at this point, or that you're still sort of faced with? Yeah, it's um, I think kind of my my dream, you know, many musicians' dream is to take it as far as it can go mm-hmm. and see, you know, you want to go on tour and have people come there that know your name and, and know your songs. And for me, it's, you know, just a thing to try to give the music, you know, it's, it's due these songs that I've written that I believe in. And it is one thing to, you know, sit in my, my room and play them by myself. And it gives me something very special. Right. Uh, but another element is being able to share it with people. Right. So I think that is kind of the frustration is, you know, there's kind of like a, a small circle that I'm able to share it with. Mm-hmm. Now with the internet that expands that circle, but the internet's a very tricky place. It is, it is. And it expands that circle for a lot, a lot, a lot of people. Sometimes people who might not be deserving of that spotlight as much. And there's a lot more competition. And, and when you do want to see your babies go far, there's always kind of a nagging feeling like maybe maybe that maybe I should be a little bit further along than I am. But sometimes we just got to stop and, and look at what, you know, where we've came from, too. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think that's one thing I try to keep in mind when when those kinds of thoughts come up is if I so I, I had um, the Moths in the Attic record, our first one pressed to vinyl recently at the end of last year. That had to be a great feeling to see. Yeah, it, it's kind of like the the final completion of you know, something I'd, I've worked on for a long time and seeing it in that final form. And I think about if I were to hand that product, you know, to myself around that time that I, you know, performed my first live song, like I would have been in awe. Like I, I did this. This is what this it sounds like. Okay. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. And for those who haven't listened to Moth in the Attic, I, I, I can only imagine on vinyl, it sounds amazing. Yeah, it was uh, the completion of my vision for that for that project. Very cool. Um, so, yep, I'm very happy with it. While we're there, um, can you tell us a little bit more about the band? Yeah, so um, started out as kind of uh, again a nebulous idea, of bringing in a bunch of different musicians to fill, you know, the space of this music, like these songs that I I wrote just by myself on acoustic guitar and then filling it out in sometimes very unexpected ways. Mm -hmm. So that uh, first album uh, features like 10 different musicians. But I think for most people in the Toledo area that know us, they know us as a, as a trio because that's how we've been performing for the last probably seven or eight years around here. Has it been that Um, long? Time flies, doesn't it? It is weird, yeah. But yeah, I think our our first show was probably almost 10 years ago. But in terms of performing regularly, probably like 2017, 2018. Um, And that's with our percussionist Kevin Jory and uh, saxophonist Mike Williams. And we've been traveling around Northwest Ohio and sometimes beyond and playing like that and different versions of our songs with that uh, lineup. Williams has done a lot of stuff solo on his own. I mean, I, I see his name everywhere around town. Oh, yeah. Um, do all three of you sort of pursue your own side projects? Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of the, the same thing with me, and I would assume for, for many musicians is, you know, you just love music and something about an idea or or whatever calls you to do it so you got to pursue it so yeah mike is is everywhere you you can't not see him (laughs) and he's great so he he adds a lot to our project and he does a great job with his his own stuff too very cool very cool besides music is there anything else like creatively you know that that fuels your passion uh that you you do sort of on the side or, or you do when maybe the music's not flowing like you you wish it would yeah, I love art kind of in, in all its its facets. Um, I write poetry, which a lot of times turns into lyrics or parts of that turn into lyrics. Um, when I was a kid, I loved drawing and visual art. Um, so my 
latest solo collection, which is called Ohio Reveries. Mm -hmm. There's an emblem of Ohio with a bunch of, you know, interesting little things within the state. Um, And I I drew that, so that was kind of been plastering that image all over everything and that project was one of my early introductions to you. I know, oh, yeah. I know uh, we reached out through the Toledo city paper to take a little bit, you know, closer look at that project. And yes. I got an early, early listen and it was, it was, you know, it was a great, great listen. Great to, to get to know, you know, you a little bit more behind that project and now to see where you've come since then is, is awesome. Yeah. Well, I always appreciate the support. That's for sure. Um, do you have any advice for any young or aspiring musicians who also have that sort of nagging urge to to make music their their life pursuit? Yeah, I mean, I think just keeping in mind, it's uh, like with a lot of career paths, there's kind of a direction booklet that comes with it. <laughs> like you take take these steps, and then you know you may not know exactly where where you're going to end up, but you had a pretty good shot at, you know, getting in the field that you want or whatever. Uh, music is not necessarily like that. And being okay with that is kind of half the battle. So kind of like what I was saying with, you know, my own pursuits is it's just a beautiful thing that I can do this in whatever capacity I can do it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's that's some advice. I'm sure there's much more, but <laughs> yeah, you got to kind of, kind of carve your own way a little bit. Yep. Not be afraid to, to explore who you are as a musician, maybe for sure. Cool. So if anybody wanted to check out, you know, sort of what you have on the horizon, what you've done in the past, that kind of thing, um, where is the best place they can find you and where can they learn more about your, your music? Websites are probably the best place. Uh, moths in the Um, also Zach Fletcher and that's Z A C K kind of been on a break recently, but that's, you know, where I, I update everything. Mm-hmm. We, we have social media and stuff too. So that's so hard to keep up with websites and social media. Yes. I think, I think most people, especially people who are in some sort of creative field, understand that if there's a little bit of, right. you, know, there, you get a little bit of slack on that. I hope. Well, there's another, there's another piece of advice is, you know, kind of what I expected as a musician is, you know, I just want to write and play music. But when you get serious and public facing with it, mm-hmm. then you become your own booking agent, your own manager, mm-hmm. your own social media content creator, mm-hmm. you know, website design, all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. So you wear many hats to uh, to get the thing off the ground. Mm-hmm. And you have to sort of embrace that. Yep. You're yep. going to want to fight it. Right. You're going to yeah. want to say, no, I'm not doing that. I'm just doing, you know, I'm doing my art. Yep. And in a perfect world, that's what we'd be able to do. But even even people who get signed to, to big labels, I'm sure. But I know like, oh, yeah. people who get signed as a writer to big publishers yep. still have to do a lot of that. Yep. And, and it's, it's just part of the deal. Yeah. And it gives you, you know, agency over mm-hmm. your mm-hmm. your product and your the thing that you're trying to do. So right. the better you get at those extra facets, you know, the better off you'll be. And that, that is for folks who are, are trying to make sort of a living or a career out of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's also absolutely nothing wrong with just doing it because you love it. Yeah, And just sure. enjoy There's There are some days where with my writing, for example, where I wish that I could just do it because I love it. And I wasn't trying to make anything out of it. Yep. And I had the, the, the career on the side that I loved and that I was, you know, sold on doing for the rest of my life. And writing could just be a fun hobby. Yeah. But if, if it's that's not you, if you do, you know, want to make it who you are, there's a lot to it. Yep, for sure. Uh, is there anything, I know we could talk about music for, for hours, uh, but is there anything related to, to what you're doing that we haven't touched on at all? Like I, I think the most recent thing that, that happened um, was releasing that vinyl of our first record and kind of what's in the works at the moment is uh, record number two. No uh, timetable for that or anything, but uh, just something to keep an eye out for. And it's going to come along with like with the first album, we did a, a live sessions version, Ooh. which was with the trio, and we're kind of doing a similar thing for this one too, okay. where you get the studio album, which is a fuller feel, and then um, the trio version, which people who've seen us live would be more familiar mm-hmm. with. Mm-hmm. So, For those live sessions, would you include any of the other artists that you've worked with, or is it just the three of you usually? Um, it's just the trio, yep, just Very the three cool. of us, and we we performed it um, 
we we recorded at a place called Bigfoot Studios, which is local in mm-hmm. Waterville. He just hooked us up live, and, <laughs> and we just did our thing. There's something special about those live sessions too. I mean, you get you get a sound that you don't ever hear anywhere else. And, yeah, um, I've had more visceral reactions to live music and, and live sessions like that than than studio as well. So especially yeah. if it's done right and done by passionate musicians. Yeah, no, they're they're two different beasts, and it's fun to explore each of those areas, especially when you're looking at, you know, like the the same song, which is fun to see you know, the different versions that come out. Um, Play them back to back to back and hear the, hear the, the differences and hear the... Yeah, you, you hear them, you know, with the trio and then studio version, again, bringing in all of these um, other musicians. So it's, it's like the same thing, but two different experiences. Last but certainly not least, do you have a tune you'd like to share with our listeners today? Yes. Is it as it say? Is it as it say? Is it as it say?
bear the words apart And deal in the dark with the devil's Crown, the rain trickles down. Will we be the ones to say? We forgot that we ever existed. Is it I should say? We forgot that we ever existed. That, whew, that was incredible. That was the world premiere of Moths in the Attic's Live Sessions 2 collection recording of their song, Human Things. My, my, that was as sweet as wine. Zach, well, it's been absolutely amazing talking with you about your music. I look forward to everything you have on the horizon, and I do appreciate you making the trip out here again to, to, to sit with us. I appreciate it so much, and thank you for your support of, of local music and art. Absolutely. Until next time, my friend, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Right, take care. Thank you, folks. This has been today's episode of Proud to Be of Rust and Glass. Zach Fletcher, like many of us, continues to pursue his art form, often out of necessity. It's that burning desire to create, that unidentifiable urge to follow our mind's path that keeps incredible artists like Fletcher going. We create because we must. We create because that's what we were born to do. I am your host and producer, Curtis Dieter. Our executive producer is Chris Pfeiffer. If you want to join the conversation, check us out at wgte.org backslash rust and glass. Until next time, thank you for listening. Now go forth and create. WGTE. Voices around us. WGTE is supported in part by the American Rescue Plan Act funds, allocated by the City of Toledo and the Lucas County Commissioners, and administered by the Arts Commission.